Hey everyone welcome to my YouTube channel. AMFK Tech here, and today we will be looking at the Renault Megane E-Tech. As electric vehicles become more and more popular, the Renault Megane E-Tech is big news for both Renault and those looking for a new family car. Why is this so important? The Megane name is an internal combustion engine that has been competing with the Ford Focus, Vauxhall Astra and VW Golf for more than 20 years, but this latest version, the E-Tech, is battery-powered only. It also sits on a new electric vehicle structure that has underpinned Renault models for many years. Although the Megane E-Tech is large, it has surprisingly large proportions so it's hard to tell from photos alone, but it's roughly the same size as the VW ID3. That puts it in a part of the market where it's very difficult to accomplish. It is to move forward. In addition to the ID.3, there are also small EV competitors such as the Cooper Bone, MG4 and Nissan Leaf. These are formidable enemies. So what has Renault given the Megane E-Tech to help it compete? For starters, all variants have a 60 kWh, usable capacity, battery that can drive up to 450 miles between charges, at least officially. Competitive range, but how does the car stack up in other key areas, including load, performance, and comfort? Over the next page, this review will tell you everything you need to know about the Renault Megane E-Tech, including which trim level we think makes the most sense and how we rate it against the competition. Then decide which car is right for you and will help you save thousands of euros on book value. What cars are you looking for for free? New Car Deals Page you can find many new electric vehicle deals. Performance and drive. Regardless of equipment, all Renault Megane E-Tech models have 215 horsepower driving the front wheels. It has an electric motor and is quite maneuverable. In our tests, it went from 0 to 100 km per hour in 6.9 seconds, much quicker than a Cooper Born or MG4 in its class. All versions are four-wheel drive so you have to be a little careful with the throttle when the track is wet. A hard foot can spin the front wheels before the traction control engages and temporarily cuts power. The entry-level equalizer trim, which comes with 18-inch wheels, is the most comfortable to drive, but the Megane Tech is still comfortable with the 20-inch wheels that come with the top trim. The suspension is stiffer around the edges than on the MG4 giving the body firmer control, and potholes and bumps are dealt with quickly without noticeable jolts. Unfortunately, just because the suspension is stiff doesn't mean it's a good ride. It is quite nimble compared to the Nissan LEAF, but the steering is very light and the speed changes after the first few degrees of attack. That said, accurately positioning the car on fast, twisty roads can be more difficult than a Born or VW ID3. Techno and higher trims come with a sport mode that adds some weight to the steering wheel. It doesn't really change the driving experience, so you don't pay extra. The regenerative braking system, which regenerates the battery by regenerating energy during braking, has four power settings, which can be switched using small paddles behind the steering wheel. In the most extreme situations, especially in the city, there is no need to use the actual brake pedal. Unfortunately, it's very difficult to judge when using the pedals. It sinks to the bottom with very little pressure and then breaks suddenly. Renault boasts additional soundproofing built into the floor to reduce road noise, a technology it calls the cocoon effect. Goes well. The Megane E-Tech is definitely a quieter cruiser than the Born and MG4, with very little wind around the windscreen pillars. The suspension is also damped, and clear shocks appear only on the sharpest roads. What about the scope? In our winter test, the Megane E-Tech covered 300 km on a cold day, well beyond the official range of 280 km. That day the Bourne covered 182 miles, and the MG4 long range covered 316 miles. Warm weather has a lot to do with all three models. Inside. With extensive seat and steering wheel adjustments, the Renault Megane E-Tech offers a much better driving position than the left-hand drive MG4. Even better, with all the adjustments, it's easy to stay comfortable on long rides, and the adjustable lumbar support you get on the top trim is a nice addition. However, the windshield pillars are quite thick, which can get in the way when taking sharp turns or exiting intersections. 
Rear visibility is poor due to large rear pillars and small rear windows, less of an issue in the Cupra Born and MG4. Fortunately, rear parking sensors and a rear view camera are standard on all models, and all but the entry level variant have front sensors. To make life easier, the top two moldings replace the rear camera with a 360 degree view camera. Inside, the Megane e Tech is nicely decorated and filled with plenty of soft materials, many of which are recycled. There is hard plastic, but it is hidden low so as not to spoil the overall impression. All UK models feature a 9.0-inch touchscreen infotainment system. Slightly angled towards the driver, it's easy to see, reach, and more intuitive than the touchscreens on the Bourne and MG4. A lot of tech is also included, all trim levels have Android Auto and Apple CarPlay smartphone mirroring, while Techno trims and UPS add Google services, including Google Maps and two additional speakers. Passenger and Cargo Space The Renault Megane e-tech has plenty of headroom and legroom in front. There's also plenty of storage space, including a door drawer for a large water bottle, a moderately sized glove compartment, a small tray under the infotainment system for your phone, with charging for the techno version of the cordless phone, and plenty of stowage space. There is Bottle In the cabin Center armrest and in front of it Note that there's only one cup holder, and the long bottom compartment has two movable dividers, which can be a bit unwieldy. The back could have been better. Two of his six-foot bikes have his head in contact with his liner on the roof and knee space below class standards. The legroom under the front seats is also small. In short, the Megane e-tech is main rivals, such as the Cupra Bone, MG4 and VW ID3, are much more comfortable in the back. Boots are short but very deep. His impressive seven carry-on bags could fit under the trunk lid, compared to six on the Bourne and five on the MG4. The downside is that the load edge is so high that it's not easy to lift large objects to AT least there's a handy compartment under the trunk floor that's big enough to stow your charging cables. The rear seats can be folded 60-40, which is standard for this class. When the seat backs are folded down, there is a large step in the extended luggage compartment floor, making it difficult to drag long luggage. Also missing is the ski hatch found on Bourne and ID3. Cost and Verdict for cash, the Renault Megane e-tech costs more than his top-spec MG4 and Nissan LEAF, and almost matches the Cuperborn and VW ID3. Unfortunately, Megane e-tech should suffer more from cushioning than all of its competitors except LEAF, which could affect how much you pay each month if you choose to buy with PCP financing. You can check the latest prices by searching the new car sales page. If you drive a company car, you will find that Megane e-tech has a very low in-kind tax since it is an electric vehicle. Our choice is the entry-level Equilibre version. Standard equipment includes 18-inch alloy wheels, full LED headlights, air conditioning, heated front seats and steering wheel, keyless entry, and a 9-inch touchscreen infotainment system. Techno trim adds 20-inch alloy wheels, adaptive LED headlights, rear privacy glass, adaptive cruise control and an upgraded 6-speaker audio system. The launch edition adds an even better 9-speaker Harman Kardon stereo system and an improved rear-view camera. The iconic trim on top has everything the other trims have, plus a heat pump. This is a handy device that allows you to warm up your car without consuming too much battery. The maximum charging power is 130 kilowatts. This means that it takes about 30 minutes to charge the battery from 10 to 80 percent if you connect a sufficiently powerful fast charger. It takes about 10 hours to fully charge a 7 kilowatts home wall box. This roughly matches the 58 kilowatt hours of Born and MG4. The Megane E-Tech main battery comes with an 8-year warranty. Euro NCAP gave this model a 5-star rating for safety, but Bourne was slightly better at protecting adults and children in a crash. Many safety technologies are standard, including Lane Keep Assist and Automatic Emergency Braking AEB. Techno Trim and Above Add Blind Spot Monitoring and Rear Cross Traffic Alert. Thank you for visiting. See you next time.